Hello and welcome to RTC60 on Channel 4. To start off this week's episode, Got Game has an interview with the new head football coach, Mike Zayner. Beck Specs, my co-host Taylor Beck, is going to be having a prom preview for 2012. The senior spotlight of the week is Kristen Woods. And the community video is a look into the cheer program that is happening at Columbia Elementary. Welcome to Got Game. This week we talked to Mike Zayner, the new head football coach at Rochester High School. We will be discussing some team goals and some ideas he has for the summer program. Let's take a look. Hello and welcome to RTC on Channel 4. I'm Abby Malco and with me today is the new head football coach, Mike Zayner. How are you, coach? Good, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Would you like to start off and tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, I am a 2001 grad from Culver Community High School. Uh, played football there, was a part of uh, some successful football teams and wrestling teams, and then uh, went on to Manchester College, got my uh, Bachelor's of Science degree in Health and Physical Education, and was a part of the uh, football program at Manchester College. So about your family and how you got to come to Rochester with the coaching job, could you tell us about that? Yeah, right after Manchester, I actually spent a year at Huntington North High School. I was a football and wrestling coach there, and then uh, taught PE and weights, and then the job opportunity opened up here at Rochester. I did my student teaching at Rochester, and uh, it was a chance to get closer to home, so my wife and I took it, and I have a beautiful wife. She is a Culver grad, also Manchester grad, and we have two beautiful kids, Zach and Zoe. Well, awesome. So on to the football aspect. You got the job because you were already in the program and that was the plans to teach you as being the head coach? When I came in five years ago, I talked to Mark when I uh, applied for the position for teaching and uh, you know he knew I had aspects to be a head football coach someday and he helped groom me as far as you know give me the defense to call. I called the JV offense uh, my first second my second year in the program and uh, just went from there. He groomed me. I learned a lot from Mark and um, he definitely taught me a lot. Do you have any specific goals for the upcoming season? Um, team goals, we've been talking. We've been meeting as a, a team as far as seniors on Fridays. We've been doing a leadership team a meeting, and then uh, we've been talking about goals. You know, everybody's goals, obviously, to uh, win conference. Um, I think, you know, seniors always talk about getting the bell back. Um, and then, you know, looking at the postseason, it's been 12 years now since we've had a sectional championship that's something that's on everybody's mind also so I mean those would definitely be the top of our goals right now. What are your feelings for the upcoming season being a new coach to come in but yet you know the guys well enough that you're not brand new? Yeah I'm not I don't expect we're going to change much we're still going to run a 4-4 defense um, offensively we're still going to be in an eye we're still going to run trap we're still going to run some bootlegs and stuff like that I don't see us changing much offensively or defensively um, the kids that are in the program they've been here for a while they know the system I don't think it's going to be a culture shock I will demand you know more of them in the weight room uh, we've been having a pretty good offseason attendance rate right now so that's that's been a good thing. And I think that's helpful that you aren't a brand new coach and the guys know you and they know the program well, so it'll be a good transition. Do you have any specific plans for the summer? And I know you said you had some weight training going on. Any camps that you're going to be doing? Uh, we're actually going to run our team camp earlier in the summer. We're going to go uh, the first full week of June. We usually hold it off till the towards the end of the summer. We do a 7-on-7 uh, seven seven league where seven other teams come and play on Tuesdays. I'm going to continue that. We'll have area teams come and we'll do a 7-on-7 seven seven tournament. And we'll have a lineman competition at the end of the summer along with those teams. Uh, we'll run weights three, uh, three to four days a week. Um, kids are expected to be there. And other than that, I don't think nothing else. 
Well, that sounds like you have a good plan for the season, and we know we're excited to have you as the new coach, and we wish you good luck this fall. Thank you. I appreciate it. We would like to wish Coach Zayner and the football team good luck this fall when they start their season. That's all I have for you on Got Game. See you next week. Hi, my name is Taylor Beck, and this week on Beck Specs, we are going to take a preview of the prom coming up May 12th, and uh, we hope you enjoy. My name is Sheldon Hubbard. I am a junior here at RHS. This year, I'm attending prom at Manchester, and I am going with Lauren Shawley. I asked her to prom by walking into her first period classroom, and my, our friend Jory actually told me to get down on one knee because he actually knew it was going to happen. But I asked her and she said yes, right away. Before prom, we plan to go out to the lake by the fairgrounds and we plan on having a picnic with a big group of our friends that are going with us. And we're going to do pictures and then we're going to take a limo to prom. Hi, I'm Jeremy Sheets and I'm a junior here at Rochester High School. I'm going to prom with Delaney Vanden Bosch. Well, I first asked Delaney during first period one day, I stopped her in the hallway and asked her. She said no, but then later on that night she called back and we ended up going together. Before prom, Delaney and I planned to go to a picnic type dinner and then we are going to go pic get pictures and then obviously go to prom. Most people do an after prom vacation or trip or something, but we're doing one before and we're probably going to Fort Wayne. Hi, my name is Vonda Mole. I'm a freshman or ninth grader at RHS. Hi, I'm Shayla Korn and I'm also a ninth grader at RHS. I'm Megan Jackson and I'm also a freshman at RHS. I'm going to prom with Fritz Heinzman. Um, I'm going to prom with Ryan Ranstead. And I'm going to prom with Tyler Smoker. Um, he asked me by buying the tickets and telling me we were going to prom. <laughs> uh, we were at my house and we were jumping on a trampoline and he just came out and asked me. Um, Tyler asked me by just giving it to me a little bit after my birthday as a surprise. <laughs> Um, we're basically just going to his house and then getting his dad's truck and heading to prom, probably go to, out to eat before. Uh, we're going out to eat at Ruby Tuesday with my brother Seth and his girlfriend Bailey. Um, we're just taking my mom's car and we're going somewhere nice to eat <laughs> before. Hi, my name is Rayan Hunter. I am a junior here at Rochester High School. I'm going to prom with Roberto Cervantes and he graduated from Valley last year. Um, Roberto asked me to prom and we were watching a movie and he was just like, hey, can I go to prom? And I was like, sure. <laughs> um, before prom, we are using my dad's Mustang and we're driving to Wabash to go out to eat and then from there, driving to Manchester to go to prom. Um, after prom, we haven't decided yet, but I think we might go to Chicago, but I don't know yet, just to go and like um, walk around, go to some of the museums and stuff. I'm Luke Green and I'm a junior. I'm Kaylee Stump and I'm a junior. All right, so we've been dating for a while, so I just assumed I would take Kaylee right here. I guess I'll go. <laughs> uh, we're going to go with another couple from our school to Hanayori in South Bend. It's like a Japanese restaurant. We're going to go with some friends to a bonfire afterwards. I'm Maggie Good, and I'm a junior. I'm Caitlin Sawyer, and I'm a junior, too. Um, I'm going to prom with Colin Bennett. I'm going to prom with Ramson Bet Nimrod. Colin asked me to go to prom with him. It was kind of just a mutual agreement. We decided to go as friends. Before prom, we're going to take pictures together at Austin Sausman's, and then we're taking a limo to Noah Noah to eat. Before prom, we have a group of 10 people that are going to Ivy Brock to take pictures, and then we're going to my grandma's to eat. Um, after prom, we're not really sure what we're going to do yet. I think we're going to swim for a little bit and then probably just go home. Same as her. <laughs> Good luck to all the juniors and seniors going to prom this year. Remember to be safe. And we hope to see you next week. My name is Kristen Woods. In the past four years of NRHS, I've uh, been an FFA, student council, um, key club, band, and um, ambassador. Uh, my favorite class is probably animal science and advanced animal science because that's why I'm heading towards for college. 
My favorite teacher would probably have to be Justin Pearson. He's my ag advisor and my mentor through uh, years of FFA and for 4-H as well. Uh, high school's been full of a lot of memories for me. I can't just pick one. With all the clubs and everything I'm in, it's just hard to pick one in particular. Lots of friends, lots of memories I'll take with me as I go to college. Uh, I want to be remembered for being hardworking and having good leadership skills and being there for people. Uh, after high school, I plan to attend IPFW for pre-veterinary science medicine and later transfer to Purdue to finish up my doctorate. I can't wait for graduation just because of the fact it's my last year for everything, uh, just to get through everything and feel accomplished for what I'm doing. Uh, in 20 years, I hope to see myself running my own vet clinic, if not uh, actually in with another partnership uh, with large animal science. My name is Kristen Woods, and I'm proud to be a Rochester Zebra. Hi, I'm Becky Pike, and I'm the principal at Columbia Elementary, and I feel very fortunate today to be with a group of staff members here at Columbia who have been recipients of what we call the Cheer for the New Year at Columbia, and basically what the program has entailed is we went to the staff and asked them, what does that mean if you think about our positive culture and climate at Columbia, um, and we were looking for cheer recipients, and they came up with a whole list, and I'm going to put my glasses on to read it, but... Um, we felt that recipients would have one or more of these, a positive attitude, being helpful, a team player, encouraging, enthusiastic, they take initiative, and they have a sense of humor. And today, um, what we did was, throughout the two months of January and February, we uh, chose names out of our cheer box. And we had several nominees, and you'll see those in a moment. They're on our board. And we would pick out a name, and that person represented, it, represented what our cheer award is about. Today, we have a few awards to hand out to these individuals. And um, then we're going to have another type of drawing when we're finished with that. And I'm glad to have Mr. Ronk, our superintendent, here with us today. And Mr. Ronk, you want to hold these? And oh, is there I'd anything you'd like to say about <laughs> Well, uh, we, we often talk about family, uh, educating in a family atmosphere, and, and, I, and I think uh, the more we can make young people feel at home when they're here at school, the more comfortable they are, the, uh, the, the more motivated they are, and we really thank you for providing that kind of an atmosphere, atmosphere and, and just that kind of a setting for them. So thank you very much. I'm very proud of all of them. And, and I think each one of you standing here represent this um, truly. So the first one goes to Mrs. Kim Beal. And Kim Beal displays flexibility and support. So she was nominated for that. Congratulations, Kim. The next new cheer award is Mrs. Ann Calcutt. And Mrs. Calcutt displays kindness and gentleness to her students. Mrs. Kathy Cole, and Mrs. Cole is always willing to help teachers and students any way she can. Thanks, Kathy. Mrs. Jennifer Keller, who displays generosity and caring every day. Thanks, Mrs. Keller. Mrs. Karenko, Crystal Karenko is another one of our recipients, but she is not here this afternoon. So we thank Crystal for her having a positive attitude, a sense of humor, and her encouragement. And we have Mrs. Dina Lehman, who is not with us this afternoon, but she is uh, works overseeing our cafeteria, and she displays encouragement, enthusiasm, and also a positive attitude. Mrs. Kylie Shepard. Uh, Mrs. Shepard displays cheerfulness every day, and she always has a smile on her face. She's fun to be around. <laughs> We also have Mrs. Lynn Van Cleve, and Mrs. Van Cleve dis displays a positive and caring attitude every day. Mrs. Christina Wortley. Mrs. Wortley always displays cheerfulness. <laughs> 
And Mrs. Deb Youngstrom. Mrs. Youngstrom displays a positive attitude. We love hearing Deb interact with our kiddos. So you guys need to pat yourselves on the back because that is quite an honor. And obviously your colleagues see you as a positive influence in our building. So thank you very much. Mr. Ronk. Congratulations. Mr. Ronk and I are um, going to spend some time. We're going to pick two names out of the cheer box. And we are going to spend some time in, in that role, whatever role. Because we have a variety of roles here. We have IAs. We have our cafeteria workers. We have our teachers. We have our, you know, a whole group of Why individuals. I don't know. They're looking at us <laughs> like, I don't know. They won't want to leave the building. They'll want to <laughs> stay here and watch that chaos. <laughs> So <laughs> we're going to give Mr. Ronk a helmet and his <laughs> knee pads, right? So we'll be set. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to pick two names and then the challenge has been for two of you to go out into the community then and share, learn, grow and give with our community. So, um, and you may not have made a decision yet of what you're doing, but um, I'm sure we will hear what that is along the way. So Mr. Ronk, you want to do the honors here? What do you... We each gonna draw our own name. Okay. <laughs> and the lucky uh, person in my case is Crystal. <laughs> Crystal is an IA here at Columbia Elementary, and she's not here right now, but she will be okay. thrilled to hear her. In what building, or I mean, what room, or role? Well, she does several. She's in Mrs. Barton's classroom, and she works with students, and then she also works with remediation with her students. So, fire up. Right. Fire up. Okay. Let's see what else we've got here. Mrs. Keller, I will be working with your kindergarten students. So we will have Crystal and Mrs. Keller. Do you know where you're going to head yet, Mrs. Keller? Okay. All right. All right. Well, congratulations to all of you. And thank you again for your contributions. And we'll have a good time, won't we, Mr. Ryan? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks. We're here for the uh, to recognize the winners of the Columbia Cheer for the New Year Awards. And what we'd uh, like for you to do is introduce yourself, tell you tell us what your role is here at the Columbia, and, and perhaps tell us why this building does seem like family to you. Okay, I'm Kathy Cole, and I'm the music teacher here. And because of that, I work with everyone. Um, we have six concerts per year, two at each grade level, and therefore I'm always asking for time, schedule changes, you name it, and everyone is always willing to give. They're just very flexible, um, very caring. They care that the kids um, come first, and so they will do everything they can to make things work smoothly for me and for the kids during that time when everything's kind of topsy-turvy. Thank you, Kathy. Yes. This is part of the Cheer for the New Year program at Columbia, and we have a joint uh, presentation here of a couple of our winners who are going to tell you who they are, what their role is at Columbia, and why they think the building seems like family to them. I'm Kim Beal, and I'm an IA here at Columbia, and I also teach some of the gym classes. And um, I think Columbia is just a family because we're all friends, and everybody who works here, they really care about each other, and we, we can step in and just do what needs to be done um, for anybody here. So that's what makes Columbia a family to me. That's hard to top. <laughs> I'm Kylie Shepard, and I teach kindergarten here at Columbia. And I feel like we just have a lot of cheer here. We, like Kim said, we're like a family here. We celebrate all of our out of school things together like a family. We celebrate babies and weddings and just special things with each other. And I feel like everyone just tries really hard to include everybody.
Hi, my name is Terry Lee. I'm the Executive Director of Fulton Economic Development Corporation. At Fulton Economic Development Corporation, our mission is to attract and retain business and industry to the county. One of the ways we do this is by improving the workforce in Fulton County through partnerships with schools and employers to ensure the workers of today and tomorrow have the requisite skills to succeed. Our initiative is called the Learn Network. It is the most comprehensive collaboration of local educators, local business, and local industry. Today, Fulton County residents can access information on business training, career building, life skills classes, local Ivy Tech class listings, and schedules all in one location, learnnetwork.org. Learnnetwork.org is a resource that showcases the vast opportunities you have right here in Fulton County. Opportunities to learn, to grow, to improve your future today. Learnnetwork.org has also partnered with Indiana Career Connect. No jobs in Fulton County? Take a look. Up-to-date job listings right here in Fulton County. Available 24 hours per day, 7 days per week. The jobs are here. Are you ready? Learnnetwork.org and our local partners can help you prepare for your next job. As part of the Learn Network, local business and industry leaders have agreed to share a little bit about their companies and to offer an unprecedented look into what they are expecting from individuals who apply for a job with their companies. We encourage anyone in the job market to watch closely and to make an honest personal assessment. If your skills don't match up, we are here to help. Remember the website, www.learnnetwork.org. It is an unbelievable asset to this community and your guide to improving your future. Winnemette Coil Spring, uh, actually, we provide mechanical coil springs uh, for many different industries. Uh, we've been in business for 64 years uh, and working on continuing in that endeavor. Uh, the springs that we do manufacture are compression, um, mechanical torsion, uh, and also uh, extension springs. Uh, we employ 172 people, um, and uh, we are family-owned. Uh, it's third generation. Uh, actually, we are a single site facility. Uh, we are located here in Kiwana. Uh, we have over 150,000 square feet under roof here in Kiwana. Uh, we actually have a couple plants. Uh, we have a plant one and plant two, and plant two actually consists partially of the old Kiwana school building that we retrofitted into a manufacturing facility. So we've been able to use some of the resources that have, have been here locally for many years. So One of our strong points is the fact that when we started, we started as a job shop. So we'll make one piece or we'll make a million. And Potentially, we have probably 400 to 450 customers. And agriculture is our biggest field. Right. We continue to work that way because there's a guy that needs one spring needs them just as bad as one that needs a million. My father worked in a spring company in, in the 40s in Logan Sport, Logan Sport Spring. And he decided to start a company. And he started in Winnemac, Indiana in 1947. And he had two partners who he bought out in, within two years. So he was on his own, and he struggled somewhat. And in 1957, the building he was in was too small. So he started looking for a building in Kiwana. Fulton County was the place that he landed. We have third generation in now. We have a lot of long-term employees. Last year, for instance, we lost 100 years of service and three people that retired. So that's kind of success. But it still goes back to having a customer and being what field you're in. And when John Deere come along in 1978, I believe, my brother told me we could be as big as John Deere as we want to be. I'll never forget those words. Well, in 91, we threw them the challenge. We said we wanted to be their number one spring company, and it worked out. It had been a great company to work for. And the rest, we just hired very good people. And I was going to add on our employment, a lot of our people are friends of people who already worked here. And that's, we just don't have any turnover. And you talk about growth in a company, Doc Russell, our plant manager, retired last year after 40 years. He was hired the Logan Sport machine as a machinist. He spent the last 20 years being plant superintendent. So there is an avenue for growth if you come in and do your job. So that's a little bit of the history. We've done 31 million in sales last year. 50 years ago, dad done 300,000. So real success story. And last year's sales was a record for this company. So. Uh, it's been a, a very good couple of years. Uh, even though the economy's down, the ag sector has really helped us. We have 172 uh, currently going into this year. Uh, and we also, we, we've had some uh, very fortunate years the last couple. Uh, the ag market's done very well. So what we'd like, we're going to continue to expand and grow in that endeavor. So we really hope to.
Uh, currently we have out of that 172, 85 people that live in Fulton County. Uh, so that's almost 50% of our uh, headcount. Um, and so it's a big portion of our labor force. As a company in Fulton County, you know, one of the impacts that we have is hiring the people in Fulton County and then paying a good wage. And I just wanted to add that just last year, um, Winnemac Coil paid its Fulton County employees almost $3 million. That's basically half our payroll. And so that's a lot of money going into the Fulton County community. Our average of our workforce is almost 12 years on average of service here. So that that's, speaks very well for the company and how it treats its people. And I can vouch that it, they treat everybody very well. Our positions that we have, we, we're very diverse in what we do. The spring making uh, talent itself is actually a skilled trade. It's something that has to be learned with an apprenticeship. We do a lot of that in-house. We'll, we will bring good uh, candidates in, teach them from some of our more experienced operators. So the spring making itself is something we have to teach internally. But uh, on our office side of things and, and other productivity things that we do, uh, we do a lot of engineering. We do machine building internally. Uh, we build some of our own spring making machines uh, with the technology we design in house. So there's uh, electrical engineers, uh, mechanical engineers that we actually you know have on payroll that we've you know hired and uh, you know used to those things. The design process of spring making for our customers like Deere and Polaris Industries uh, requires uh, a mechanical engineers degree is is something that we have. We've got uh, about five, seven, seven engineers on staff right now. So the, that's a, something that's used quite a bit of. CAD skills. Yep. Uh, CAD drafting, that type of thing. We have a lot, of, we do clerical work. Uh, that's always, that comes with it. You gotta do the paperwork with the, with the product. Um, gotta be able to read blueprints, understand mm -hmm. blueprints, understand job orders. Um. Uh, I might add one more thing. If you remember earlier, I said that we are a job shop which means that we're it's the high intensity to have set up people, which means what Tony said about skilled trades. You have to have people that can set up jobs four or five different ones a day. So you said to be a spring maker, could I, could I enter at an entry level position and learn that trade? Is that mm -hmm. what you're saying with, with few skills? Maybe? De definitely. Uh, okay. Usually the skill set is, is one of very basics. It's, it's attitude, it's, it's attendance. Things like that are very important. The skill can be learned. I really believe that you know we we do take people off the you know off the street per se and and try to teach them the skill. But it, there's a usually kind of a background personality that makes good spring makers that we try to find in an interview process when we interview uh, prospective employees. But we really feel that it is a, a teachable trait that that a lot of people can have success in. But they have to have some of the the root uh, attitudes first right. that that really help them to be very successful. Our process when we when we have an applicant come in is they, they will fill out the, the required paperwork. Um, we try to get a kind of a, a, a quick feeling of the individual. Appearance is first and foremost. Uh, that's the first thing you present when you walk in the door is appearance. Uh, if you have that appearance, uh, then all of a sudden you get into some of the other attributes. Of, uh, once you look at their paperwork, you've got their schooling, you've got you know job history, some things like that. But your your first out of the gate is their appearance when they come in and, and just speaking with them confidence it's a big one uh, occasionally uh, I don't we don't get it I don't get the chance personally to get and see every applicant but when when somebody appears and presents themselves is very confident appearance wise is very good we make it a point to try and get up uh, or I try to make a point to get up to the front office and, and introduce myself initially right out of the gate even even if we don't have a position at that time but you, you just those people kind of stand out in the front office, I do see a lot of the people that he referred to that come in and mm -hmm. seek applications. And, and it is startling when you see what in some people's minds is coming to a, a place of business to apply for a job mm -hmm. with what they're wearing, mm -hmm. uh, with the way they look, their appearance. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it looks like they just crawled out of bed, <laughs> threw on the first thing they found and came in and interviewed for a job. And I'm just reiterating what he said that that does not give a good first impression and that is something definitely to avoid and if it's something that's that important to you then it should show 
and what you are going to to wear to present yourself in because uh, it does say a lot about you even on that first visit yeah, even on the first visit yes actually currently we're not accepting applications we have uh, we've had we've been very fortunate to have a lot of applicants come in recently we've just tried to to stop that currently just to sort through some of the ones that we've got because we do have quite a few of them um, and again, we just we go through and look for good applicants and go from that nature. One thing that we always do, though, is if there's somebody out there that has spring making experience, we definitely love for them to come in. Uh, that's just something that kind of puts you at a 1A level if you come in and be, uh, as an applicant. Is if you've got spring making experience, of course, that expedites them going into production or productivity because with the skilled trade being a two-year kind of thing that. Uh, we definitely look at that at all times, regardless of whether we're accepting them or not. So. Fulton County and Kiwana have been great partners in this all the years. I mean, since 1957, they've just been extremely helpful to anything we wanted to try to do. We feel it's a win-win situation for both people. Thanks for watching this week's RTC 60. Uh, we hope you enjoy it and tune in next week.